What's up everybody? Trent Smith here on YouTube coming at you folks with another video to help teach you and inspire you to get out there and live your own adventure. So in this video we're going to be talking about shoes and footwear selection for kayaking and sub adventures and even backpacking. I know a lot of people wonder what shoes do I need to buy for these trips? Do I need waterproof or not? Do I need both? And when might I want one over the other? In this video we're going to cover those topics and we're going to figure out what shoes you need for your next adventure. But before we jump into it, I want to say thank you to all the subscribers and patrons. Just thank you all for supporting the channel and helping keep these videos coming and keeping the adventures happening to further inspire you folks to get out there. If you're not subscribed already, be sure you subscribe, all right? Hit the bell so you'll be notified when I go live or when I post a new video. All right, let's get into the meat and potatoes. So we're going to cover my strategy and philosophy when it comes to waterproof and non-waterproof shoes, the pros and cons of each, and when you might want to wear a certain type. My strategy is pretty simple. I want to stay dry when I can, but when I'm going to get wet, I know I'm going to be wet and I'm going to have to just deal with that the best I can. Because then you can't be dry in all situations unless you take extreme measures. And I'm not that extreme. I just like to keep things simple and make it work, make it affordable and practical. I'm about to be showing you guys some of my shoe choices that I use and I have links below if you guys are interested in checking them out further. So the pros and cons of each, let's start with waterproof. The pros of the waterproof is, well, they are waterproof and they're oftentimes made of Gore-Tex which can be a pro and can be a con but they're often warmer and they are good at keeping your feet dry most of the time. Some of the cons about waterproof footwear is they're heavier, they can be hot when it's hot outside, they often have a long drying time, sometimes one or two days. They can be sweaty and clammy in warmer weather. Sometimes you'll still get wet on super rainy days and they can even lose their waterproof properties. Now when it comes to non-waterproof options you have Quite a few pros in my opinion. They're oftentimes lighter and they dry faster if they do get wet. They're more breathable for your feet. You have to worry less about getting wet. That's not on your mind all the time. And there's also a lot more design options and style options out there for whatever adventure you're going on. And some of the cons, well of course they're not waterproof. They're not usually as warm but you can always mitigate that with a good pair of socks. So me personally, most of the time I wear a non-waterproof shoe. I'm just gonna deal with the fact that okay, sometimes my feet are gonna be wet. Sometimes I can't help it. I wear them all summer long, of course. I wear them when I know that my feet are going to be getting wet. I'll wear non-waterproof if I know that the trip is gonna be like super rainy and just a lot of water that I'm gonna be coming into contact with because you kind of just can't avoid it. It's almost impossible. Even if you're wearing some of the best waterproof shoes, if it rains all day, your shoes are still gonna get wet. And then if you're operating on the water, you know, if you're going to be getting in and out of your craft and things like that, or maybe portaging over uh, logs or through rocks or shallow water or something, sometimes, okay, you can't help but your feet get wet. So you need to plan on that. So in those cases, if I were wearing my waterproof Gore-Tex shoes, they would more than likely get wet and then they would just stay wet the entire time. At least if I wear a non-waterproof shoe, blah, 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 either one, I know that, okay, I can have these dry by the morning or they'll have a lot better chance of drying. Okay Tripp, so when do you wear your waterproof shoes? Well, not very often. Typically I'll wear them if it's cold outside and if I am going somewhere where I know there's not going to be much water or there's not much of a chance for me to get my feet wet. Let's say that I'm on a kayaking trip and I know that the river is pretty clear, not going to be a lot of portaging and logs to go over and things like that because that can easily get your feet wet. I'll say, okay, I think I can paddle this river and get in and out of my kayak whenever I need to and without getting my feet wet you know, without stepping in much deeper water. Because a lot of times I do enjoy wearing these shoes when it's a cold weather paddling trip, but I am very, very cautious whenever I get out of my kayak to be sure I'm in really shallow water and to be sure that I don't get water in my shoe. Because if I do, then I'm just going to have wet shoes the whole time regardless and it would have been a waste for me to have worn my waterproof shoes. So what shoes should you buy? Well, you kind of need more than one, unfortunately. In my opinion, you need a summertime shoe. That's when I wear something like these Crocs Swift Waters that I've worn for so many adventures. Love these shoes. But now I'm kind of steering more towards these minimalist sandals. These are the Earth Runners right here. On the summertime, these are great just to walk in and stuff. I actually did a hiking trip where I hiked two and a half miles with a 60 pound back pack on my back. And these did wonderfully. 
love these shoes and I'm wearing these today. That's why they're all sandy, if you can see. If you're going backpacking or something like that, I recommend just a pair of lightweight, non-waterproof trail runners for most situations. Actually, for pretty much all situations, unless you're maybe in snow, I would say non-waterproof is the way to go when you're backpacking. If you're not a big fan of the Crocs, here's some really cool water shoes. They work really, really well. They stay on your feet good. If you want more of a traditional shoe style, and you still wanna be able to get in the water and get wet and stuff, these work really well, actually, and they're pretty affordable. Now, if I know it's gonna be cold out and I know my feet are gonna get wet, I'm gonna opt for something like these little neoprene booties here. I wore these when I went down the Little Choctahatchee River on my paddleboard because there were so many trees down. It was raining the whole time or a lot of the time. I just knew I was gonna get wet and I knew my feet would be cold. So, I grabbed these jokers. They work fantastic. They're good for climbing in and out of the kayak in on logs and stuff like that or the paddleboard and they keep your feet warm. My feet stayed warm the whole time. And I also brought another pair of shoes. I think I probably brought these Crocs with me to wear around camp. So whenever I got to camp, I put on a dry pair of socks, I put on a dry pair of shoes, and I was comfortable around camp. If you don't wanna go with the booty, you can go with something more like just a neoprene sock right here. This even has little grips on the bottom. It works pretty well. This is more intended for diving purposes, but these can be used inside your kayak just to keep your feet warm if you know that your feet are gonna be getting wet. Now, if I want to try to keep my feet from getting wet, and I know I'm not going to get in over my head, so to speak, I will wear my waterproof tennis shoes. These are just some Solomon waterproof hiking shoes. I like them pretty good. Um, I would prefer to wear a non-waterproof option, but these will protect my feet if I know I'm going to be getting in and out of my touring kayak, so to speak, which is kind of difficult to get in and out of sometimes. And you can't always avoid stepping in water, but I can really try to step in shallow water. So basically, every time that I've worn these, I've gotten lucky, and I've never gotten these soaked. So, very nice. I've enjoyed wearing them. So which shoes should you buy for your next adventure? Well, I can't answer that directly, but I hope I've given you enough information, kind of given you enough variables and factors where you can make a good decision. So what do you think? Let me know in the comments below, what is your favorite pair of adventure shoes, and are you a waterproof or non-waterproof person, or are you ambidextrous, kind of like myself? All right, folks, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.